Hey everybody, how are you doing? This is Sable Wadaki and got two big announcements, but first I'm in Arlington, Virginia, Washington, DC. It's all Crystal City. It's all kind of like just runs together. And I've been traveling for the last like two weeks, just on the road. This has like been road traveling and clocked almost like a thousand miles on my rental car when I returned it back today, but still haven't made it home. Wanted to just give you something that I really learned on my trip yesterday. So I've been visiting my family in Virginia, well, in Maryland, in Pennsylvania, New York City. I've just been all over just driving. And yesterday on my way back from New Jersey to Maryland, I'm driving this car. It's a three, three hour and 15 minute ride. That's what my GPS tells me. And so, hey, I'm gonna believe it. And there I am and I'm driving my car, driving my car, driving all the way. And um, I hit the, it says, welcome to Maryland, 95 South. So I'm like, great. I probably only have another 30, 40 more minutes to go in my ride. And then it tells me to take another street, um, another exit. And I thought, wow, that's kind of weird. But it's been saying 95 South the whole time. But anyway, you know, I'm one of those who I follow my G GPS to the fault. And I thought, okay, well, fine. I should get off. And I just thought, wow, this is kind of weird. So then I started rationalizing Oh, okay, now I get it. Yeah, this part of Maryland where I'm going probably has, um, it's probably closer to not really next to Baltimore. Anyway, so what happens as I'm driving 30, 40 minutes in, I realize I'm in Delaware. I have just gone backwards. I have like went from New Jersey all the way to Maryland and now I have turned my car back around and I am on my way back to New York. This is not really happening to me. What happened somehow, some fluke, something touched my GPS and it put a stopover for me to stop in Delaware before I got to my final destination. Cause I was checking, like, you know, when I kept thinking this doesn't seem right. I kept looking and saying, does it have the final destination? It had my final destination, but somehow it threw this stopover to Delaware. So I'm going to tell you one more story, then I'm going to tell you the whole reason why this story is so important and how it could also affect you and affect your business and just in life. So I now get back on the road and so now I have an hour and a half more, something that I've already driven for three hours and now I have another hour and a half more to go. So off I am going. I get ready to now my exit. Here I am. I'm in Dayton, Maryland and I see my exit and I'm thinking, is that my, and it's like, I'm thinking that's my exit, but it's not telling me to get off that exit. So I shouldn't get off. I'm thinking, mm, I don't really know this area that well, but that really, really looks like my exit. So I pass it. And what happens? Yep, you're right. It was my exit. And I just thought, you know what? Follow your intuition. Follow your intuition. Follow your gut. Now, I'm not a big person who's on, you know, intuition and, but I do believe that especially as women, we have this nudging in our tummy, in our spirit or wherever it is that kind of is telling us something, which way to go and what to do. And we just need to follow it more and more. And I absolutely did not follow it yesterday and it cost me big time. So I'm wondering in your own business, in your own life, when you have an intuition about something, when you have a nudging about something, when everybody else is telling you, this is not going to work, this doesn't make sense, I've never seen it before, follow your intuition. You are probably right. You are probably right on the right track. And they, because they've never seen it before, doesn't mean it doesn't happen. I mean, I just think about all the amazing businesses that we have today that each one of us are using on a consistent basis, the Airbnbs, the Ubers, and look at how people, we are paying to sleep in someone else's house in their spare bedroom. And maybe it's not you, but loads of people are doing it. Loads of people are not doing it. And when they came up with the idea, everybody said, that's ridiculous. Why would someone stay in your house? They don't know you. And you know, there was some sense of security and concern, but now we do it. We jump into other people's cars that we don't even know. And now what I've even heard is that now the new thing is parents who are extremely wealthy or who are just wealthy are now saying to their children, forget about me buying a car. Here's unlimited Uber access. I feel more comfortable by putting you in a car with someone else than giving you your own car. Who would have ever thought that that would be the switch? So behavior kind of con continuously switches, which means we as business owners have to be continuously looking at new things, looking at new horizon. 
and following our gut. When I talk to women on a consistent basis about taking their business international, the first thing I always get is like, oh, I'm too small. No, that can't work for me. Can my business really get go international? And they're constantly looking for someone who has done it before. When I talk, you know, when I give examples of businesses, they're like, well, that wasn't exactly like my business. Follow your intuition. You could be the first person in your area to take your business international. Don't wait for everyone else. Be the person who is the forerunner. So that brings me to our name. First of all, I want to say thank you guys so much, everybody who participated, who gave me a name, who voted on a name. This has been a battle just going back and forth with me. I, and I'll kind of give you a little bit of the foundation. She Works is a business that I started um, about three years ago when I was doing um, consulting or uh, HR, con well, not really HR consulting, coaching for women who were in their careers and just helping them out in their careers and move up the corporate ladder. And we used to say that we were here to take women from the corner, from the cube to the corner office. And that's basically what we were working with women on. And then we started then working um, with women in their businesses and then just really narrowed it down from their international business. And so we start to ask ourselves, does this name still work? So we were using the name She Works. We actually even built out several brands under that name. But then there came this thing of, oh, what about going global? You know, we should put some global in the name because people were like, well, what does She Works? What does She Works do? And so that's how we kind of came up with Gals Gone Global. And, and on... Every now and then people say, well, why is it gals? It sounds like it's kind of from young, just like with some of the things that you people have, um, the people in this group have said, it sounds like it's young girls. It doesn't sound like it's very serious. We are very serious about taking your business international. We're not playing. And so I thought, okay, what could we do? What kind of name that would really reflect? So that's why I want to hear from you. What did you think would really reflect? And so what did you guys uh, vote for? I, we got the most votes for the global women's exchange and um have to say it's starting to grow on me i'm trying to get it to grow on me and so that's what we're going to be using i don't know how we're going to use it we're still going to talk to our brand people about it how we're going to use it um but i do see the um how it does totally fit into our business because we are you know are for global we are for women most people are going to be um seasoned business owners who we are actually working with. You do have to have a proven business model. And then we also are exchanging because we are taking you to international buyers. So the name does really fit. So Miss Carlita White, you are the winner and you should look in your um, inbox. I'm gonna be sending you a calendar link so we can hook up. Now, I don't know if you're back in Atlanta or if you're in Washington, and if you're in Washington, I'm here for about two more days. If you're in Atlanta, I'll be back there this week. So if you want to meet face-to-face, -face, let me know. If you want to do it in person, face-to-face uh, -to -face or in person, let me know. Or we can do it over the phone. So I'm so excited. I love your business anyway. I already understand, uh, know what you do. So it's great that... Um, now I get to really kind of talk to you more about your business from another side. So this is really exciting. Um, and I, I know that there's great opportunity about, out there for you. So thanks everyone. Thanks so much for uh, being a part of the Global Women's Exchange, where we are going to be exchanging a lot more information. We're going to be um, this week coming up. Um, yes, I'm going to be in Washington. I am at the Africa Trade global summit and i'm going to be speaking here helping women and talking to african women about taking their businesses into the united states bringing their goods so if there's something you want from africa let me know drop it in the comment section let us know if you are interested in doing import export i'm going to have a lot of meetings set up with people who are looking for products in the u.s people who are looking for buyers in the u.s if you want to be a part of that conversation drop a comment send me a dm i love to talk to you have a great day